Hey guys, I'm Jeffrey and this is Auto Alchemy, the intersection between typology and self-growth. And today I'm joined by Hillary. She's been on my channel before. Hillary is an INFP. I'm an ENTP. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about this fun game that we've been playing that might help you use your extroverted intuition. Yeah, so you know, Sunday morning, um, trying to figure out what we're going to do today. Well, we kind of thought it'd be fun to play this game where we randomly generate seven words and then in seven minutes write a little story that uses all of them. And then from there we just kind of created other games and it was really cool to see what we came up with. So we're going to do one on camera and we'll also share the other two that we did. Yeah, and then we can talk about how maybe you can see a little bit of each of our personalities shining through and the choices that we're making. Uh, when we have our words or maybe it's not even typology related uh, personality tidbits but i feel like there's something there there's something interesting about the choices you make versus the choices yeah that I make. right and like our thought process and how we decided to challenge ourselves like what was the challenge that's interesting right but if you guys want to follow along at home or do your own version of this it's relatively simple all you need to do is find some kind of random word generator online yeah we just googled it I think it's called randomwordgenerator.com. Boom. Easy peasy. I can't. I'll put a graphic in right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, generate your words. The seven words that we got today are brain, family, represent, immune, total, dump, and post right. So once you, so once you have your list of words, then you're gonna take a full minute to just let ideas percolate. And then after that minute, you're going to start writing. So, I'm scared, guys. I'm go. I'm competing against a writer. Okay. Yeah. Well. Here we go. Luckily for you, oh. I don't really do so well under pressure. And <laughs> I'm already like my brain is just immediately filled with fog. It's hard to do. I'm camera camera right I know. There, yeah. Like earlier today, I feel like the stakes were so much lower, but this would be fun. All right. Yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna set a timer for seven minutes. You might think that seven minutes is a little too long, but once you get in it, you might be surprised because I didn't even finish the last one that we did. Me either, I couldn't. I had three words left. Yeah, That's so bad. let's dive into it. Seven minutes on the clock, you can see it there. How much time? Um, a minute and 10. Oh no! Pencils down! No! I was six words away. Can I just write the six words below and we won't count yeah, them? Yeah. So, and by the way, I should have clarified this before, but we try to give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room when it comes to things like creating a plural or even adding an ing to the end of a verb. I like really push that this time. Yeah, okay. We'll, well get there. To know. So once you've written your words, once you've done this beautiful creative product, you're going to exchange with your partner if you have a partner. And then you're going to take turns reading what the other person wrote. So I will start off with Hillary's attempt. Okay, so dump his ass. Is your man <laughs> is your man treating you wrong? Is he grinding your gears tight, tight, tight? Girl, you got to get right and dump his ass. If this sounds like you, call this total free total free <laughs> number <laughs> for your first sample of dump his ass. You don't got to be family to get the help you deserve, honey. Call 1-800... <laughs> Wait, where does brain dude go? My oh, dude brain. Sure. Call 1-800-MY-DUDE-BRAIN-DEAD to speak with a representative today. We guarantee to boost your nasty man immune response within no. 20... And then... That's all I got, but the rest of the sentence is... 20 years or your money back, honey. <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> That's an appropriate timeline. <laughs> Here's Jeffries. Johnny was the brains of the family, which meant that he was immune from some of the pretty, oh, from some of the petty conflicts that characterized holiday dinners. For Johnny, such conflicts represent internal flaws, primarily the interpersonal conflict itself being a complete and total red herring. When you first fight your brother or cousin or belligerently drunken uncle, it matters little who is right. What matters most is that in their combative presence, you come face to face with the garbage dump of your own psyche. 
Okay, then. <laughs> it's true. Well, yeah, I mean, I just truth. wrote something that was true. <laughs> I know, but that's like, I did not. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the only time that I did, so. So okay. what are you? So what are you seeing? I guess in the immediate differences. Um. Okay. So you're very, very narrative. Mm -hmm. This is again like even in our previous ones, uh, you use the narrative voice. You're describing something. You're not involved in it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the detachment <laughs> I feel like is one of the main things about my approach to doing these prompts. Right. And you are always actively engaged with the voice. Like you are like exploring the voice. I am. You're playing around That's inside. That's so true. Yeah. Because even, okay, it's interesting because we'll talk about the other prompts and the other uh, things we did. But um, yeah, even, even in those, like when my knee jerk reaction is to write something like more procedural or like... Um, objectively like just giving out information I still every time have ended up writing in a like first person or yeah vocal yeah. like I'm part of the I'm a character right yeah like, like if this was a snippet of something you're addressing someone even though you're, it's not even technically first person because you're like it's coming from your perspective as if you're directly talking mm -hmm. to them each group of words sometimes kind of lends itself when you first see these words to like an immediate obvious kind of picture. Mm -hmm. The family, the immunity, brain, I feel like there's something going on with, you know, clearly talking about like something wrong, how to be immune from it. Mm -hmm. And you did that literally in the context of family. Right. Yeah. When I saw it, like, and when I see these words in general, I almost always like lump them together like very quickly. Like, right, because immune and right. Like brains of the family. Like I did that. Like these two go together. Mm. Total dump. I didn't end up writing it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to be like, this place is a total dump. And then as oh. I started writing, it became completely different. Right. Um, but yeah, even right away, I start to try to find those connections so that I don't have to think too much. And I just like can write it and be done with it. Yeah, this one, I... I don't know why I like latched onto the word dump and then my brain just finished his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's amazing though, because that would never like, even that's occur it. to me. Like that also just says something about like to use dump. I, she's been using uh, Duolingo lately. So there's a lot about like verbs and you know, you might use a verb in an imperative way. I would never think to use dump as an imperative as a, form of a verb. Right. I'm just seeing it as a noun. As a dump. Yeah. A place. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's interesting to me. Right, the garbage dump of your own psyche. Yeah. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Do you want to talk about like the first one? Yeah, let's start at the beginning. The first set of words that we had were flex, useful, hurl, ancestor, merit, crew, and mercy. And actually, why don't you start off reading this time? All right, so this was Jeffrey's. The ancestors were watching, and Impcurus could not disappoint. Ancient wisdom had it that a kitten should be useful, a true contributor to others of his kin and kindle. Today's task would test Impcurus's merit. The rival crew had already sent forth their representative, a floofy boo, by the name of Murph. Murph was the ten-time champion of the little hurl, of the litter hurl, and this time he did not hold back. He flung the litter over twenty. Wait, he flung the litter over twenty feet into the distance. Impcurus was up now. He flexed ferociously while kicking his legs. No mercy could be given. No mercy would be given. Would be given. No mercy would be given. I got pretty bad handwriting. That's what's up. <laughs> this was the first time we did this, and we both actually completed. We used all the words. And finished like our sentences, <clears throat> so that was good. Yeah, I think that's like, why I like the round, this first round. Yeah, it's like lot. very complete. We did good. We were like relaxed. <laughs> we didn't have a Sitting camera coffee, going. Yeah, our PJs. And then here's Hillary's. <clears throat> Who are you to say ogres aren't a useful part of this crew? They may be slow to do the twisty pop, but they hurl our lava rocks across the deck better than our ancestors. 
If you decide to banish the ogres, I will have no mercy on you. No mercy for you getting bludgeoned to death by Jorgen's flex shields. Our protection. There is merit in the momentum of weight. <laughs> Spits. How dare. You're inside the narrative. You are part of the voice. You're talking to someone. You're addressing someone. It's just so weird, though, because when we started this and when I saw these words, I did not intend to do that. I My immediate thought was, I'll write something procedural. I'm going to talk about a tool from our ancestors, like this old tool that's useful, has merit. You know, you can flex it or something. Mm -hmm. You can hurl it. Like these, right. all these words to me were showing me like this kind of primitive tool that I just wanted to describe. I just wanted to describe like what it was, how to use it, like a user manual. Mm -hmm. That was the first thought I had. And then, okay, this word gets weird. Then I was like, no, I want to talk about oranges. <laughs> and then I was like, no, how about ogres? Duh, that's the way to do it. So then here we go. You've been drawn to like theater in the past. And I feel like there's something theatrical about that because you're doing like a monologue or you're doing... I do love monologues. Yes. Yeah. I did a monologue in my theater course once and it I got to choose it and it was called Paranoid Girl. And so I was just like a psycho on stage and it was so fun. And then I guess for me, maybe this says something about just me personally, or maybe something about like an NT type of disposition, but wanting to be a little bit more distanced from what's happening, wanting to almost take on this like omniscient surveyor of what's going on. And that's even like, that's the case of my novel that I've been working on for a while, which Hillary has read. Mm -hmm. like, there's definitely a, a sense of like wanting to be above the action. And that's mm -hmm. a part of the story. All right. So the second <clears> one we did this, once the words started popping up when I was doing the random word generator, it seemed so obvious like what we would each write about. So the words for this one were research, healthy, moral, food, population, contempt, and weave. There's a couple in there. Weave, I think, was the one that threw both of us off. Yes. But I mean moral, contempt healthy food research population like that just yeah. is like, right. Okay. So this is begging you to write something about like the research of healthy habits, food and morality in your society. <laughs> when Jeffrey reads it, I did not, I did not finish this. I left three words out and I really, really tried to challenge myself to have none of the words relate to each other. Like she didn't like, want to do the obvious I thing. didn't want to do that. I did the opposite where I was like, hell yeah. I'm going to take like, this. This is free real estate. I'm going to unite these concepts together in an obvious way so I can tell my story and get everything in. I guess I'll start this time. Okay. Um, and this is going to be a dialogue between two characters. So I will, I'll try to mod modulate my voice a little bit to uh, convey that. It's just this big research project. I've been dreading it all term. Oh, yeah. That's why I didn't take that class. I can finally, I can barely understand what Dr. Lau says half the time anyway. All this, literary. Uh, all this literary mumbo jumbo, words like contempt, but that sound like current, <laughs> current <laughs> term, both of them together, laughing in unison. Yeah, maybe I should just not do it. Or maybe you could help weave a little of your magic plagiarism talents into my paper? I may not be the the highest moral creature, but I gotta pass, man. I'm almost... Did you say molar creature? Crap, that reminds me. I'm late for the dentist. I... And then I didn't finish, and I don't even walk. know how I was gonna finish. I was gonna somehow talk about the dentist and be, having a healthy habit and foods and populations. Mm. I don't know. There's a whole population of bacteria in my mouth because oh my... of all this unhealthy food I've been eating. There you go. Just, you know. <laughs> That's good. I just didn't want them all to relate like that. It's so fun though. And again, you're playing with voice. You're playing with mm -hmm. like who's addressing who. Right. It's just not a conventional narrative. And it so works. I mean, I think you were about to head, you were heading into dangerous territory at the end. I know, like I got, to... I totally got off. <laughs> okay guys, so here's Jeffries. He definitely did the more researchy. Um, yeah, I did the obvious. The thing. obvious approach, but it, I mean, it's so creative and hilarious. So here we go. 
Oh, and you didn't finish yours either. Oh, that's right. But you did. He used all the words. You just didn't yeah. finish. Okay. A healthy population is a moral population. At least these are the findings according to recent research in the ground groundbreaking, genre busting field of edible ethics. Suck up the alliteration. Researchers at the Institute of Edible Ethicists recently published findings that lab, lab rats that were hella swole and fed on a diet of organic, protein-enriched food perform better on the trolley problem than unhealthy counterparts. The data weaved together to form an interesting conclusion. Our contempt for rodents may... And then dot, I have dot, dot. no clue what I was going to say. It's so funny to think about rats doing the trolley problem and being like beefed up. Yeah, and that wasn't Small even rats. Wasn't even what I really wanted to do initially. Instead of the trolley problem, I was going to focus on like these healthy rats are more likely to return their shopping cart at the grocery store, and that was going to be my measure yeah. of what is like ethical behavior. This reminds me. We went grocery shopping the other night. We didn't even talk about this. And we saw the dude. We just had like an unspoken oh my God, acknowledgement. I'm right. Of oh, this, yeah. So glad you're bringing this up. <laughs> this dude who, as we were leaving, you know, he's parked pretty close he's to like the storefront. He's like one of the front ones. Yeah. And instead of returning his cart or doing anything, he just like grabs it and he like very forcefully shoves it over towards the store. And like it slides, you know, in front of the, right. the path where cars are going to be moving back and forth. It didn't even seem like he looked to see if anyone was coming. No, he just, like, with everything he had. Very aggressively, like, I'm going to send it, like, returning it to the store itself, right. crashing it into the side of the building, and, yeah, very interesting. Yeah. Anyway, that is definitely a uh, tangent, but <laughs> kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so another, like, a final tool that you guys can use if you want to play this game is to actually try to compress all of these words into one sentence. So we started playing around with this when we did this prompt here. The second one, yeah. Um, you only did it for the second one. So yeah, then we're uniting research, food, healthy, we, moral population, and content into a single sentence. And um, Hillary's sentence is as follows. If research shows that weaving a healthy dose of morality into the population decreases contempt for others, we should focus on making this the main food group, so to speak, of our society. This, this is fun. This, it, this reminds me a little bit of how I met your mother, actually. And it sounds like I something that it. Robin would say when she's like... Oh, for sure. And then she would like roll her eyes at the end because of the food group thing. But I love that pun. I think it's really Thanks. clever, um, the way that you actually weave all the concepts together in that way. So, yeah. Thank you. Kudos. <laughs> It's great. Okay, so I mean, it's not really a surprise. Jeffries is super similar. Like, like I said, these words all seemed to have such like a uh, an resonance. image, yeah. yeah, a resonance that we both picked up on. So, um, even though we kind of went in different ways in how we approached our stories, our single sentences are really similar. So, this is Jeffries. Recent research weaves food and contempt indicating general population is neither healthy nor moral. That's again, like a very oh, kind of a... like, what? I was like waiting for more because it was right? so short. One sentence. Yours is definitely like you did really good with, it's almost like, say you don't have any other words to use and you only have these. Mm -hmm. How can you do it so it is like, makes sense and figure out the right order for I them to mean. like work. And yours is better at that, I think. And then everything else is like, you. You're like you have less building filler. a skeleton, and then you just put like a few bones in between. Like right. I need you, a preposition here. Yeah, right? you did. You did really good at that. It's also what's interesting is I'm saying like this is what we should do, mm -hmm. and yours is just like this is a finding. Um. Well, oh, so I remember what I wanted to say about yours, which is I like the structure. Like if you look at this on paper, <laughs> this last little bit, it looks like so much. You think there's no way that's a single sentence. But once yeah. you see, like, the way you've constructed the sentence with, like, an if-then, I thought that was pretty clever as a way to, Thanks. like, be able... Because I was trying to find a way as well to um, to kind of, like, play around with different clauses, which is why I have, like, the comma Right, like, indicating. use punctuation to your yeah. advantage. At first I was like, oh, I know, if I pose it as a question, that can be long. 
Mm -hmm. And so I initially was like, I'll make this into a question, but then I did the if, and I was like, that's good enough. Yeah, that's definitely better. Mm -hmm. I was like thinking about like, what if I use like a colon? Is that cheating? I know, I wonder if it's a semicolon. Thing. Like, yeah. technically, it's a sentence, but I'm doing two independent clauses. So that's fine, it feels like, work. That feels like cheating. Anyway, yeah, uh, I hope that some of you guys actually paused and tried to do this, but yeah. there's a chance you didn't. Um, but if you do, oh my god, and you want to leave a comment please. with like what you got. Do it. Yeah, please. It'd be so cool. Um, Just let us know if you guys have um, any ideas for like boosting any or any mm -hmm. creative exercises that you do. Um, if you're looking for ways to boost your extroverted intuition or creativity, hopefully this helps. But thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you guys liked the video. Please share any creative exercises per Hillary's request. And we will see you guys some other time. Bye, y'all. Goodbye.